Hey friends, it's Jeff, and today we're gonna be learning about the PL mount. Hey friends, it's Jeff Heath coming at you. Thank you so much for joining me. Would love if you hit that subscribe button and that little ding -a notification bell to know when a new video drops. All right, let's get into it. One of the first questions I get when I'm on set somewhere is someone will say, hey, did you go to film school to do this? Mm, not so much. I did go to the University of Google, which is I think just as good. Part of my learning in regards to everything filmmaking has been either Googling it, YouTubing it, or just getting my hands on something and trying to figure out how it works. That's also my philosophy with my marriage. So I remember the first time renting a PL mount lens. I had just gotten my red and we were on a shoot where we were using the Atlas anamorphic lenses in a PL mount. So I had to rent the PL mount along with the lenses and I, well, I had never taken off on a red, everything is modular. I never taken off the front mount, which was for my EF lenses. So what is the difference between a regular DSLR mount and a PL mount? Well, there's a few things that are different. On a DSLR, you usually have these dots that help line up your camera to your lens. And then you just twist that lens on and you'll feel a little click and there it's locked into place. A PL mount is a little different. There's one little lock on the side of the lens mount and there's four little brackets that the lens can mount onto. The first time I got a PL mount, I was able to easily unscrew the EF mount, put on the PL mount onto my red, uh, and then I had to put this anamorphic lens onto my red. So when I put this lens on, and turned on my red, I was expecting this beautiful wide format anamorphic perspective on my red and what I got was this weird squished image. Now I knew my red had a anamorphic setting in order to de-squeeze things to actually see the way an anamorphic lens should be and no matter what setting I put in, I couldn't figure out why this image looked so weird until I realized, unlike a DSLR, which can only click in one way, PL mount can be mounted four different ways and it'll still go on. School of Hard Knocks, University of Google, didn't really help me with that until I realized I put the lens on sideways. In my world, I tell my kids all the time, there's no dumb question. I would rather someone say, I don't know, and ask for help, than to just struggle and give up on something. I don't know is one of the most powerful phrases we can use. And so for those of you who are just starting in filmmaking and someone's asked you to go on this big film shoot and they want these very specific lenses that are only PL mounts and you've never used a PL mount in your whole entire life, here's a few little tips. Okay, so this is an EF mount on my Dragon right there. As you can see, my finger pointing is on point. So typically an EF mount will turn, will slide in the red mounts. Yeah, Vanna White looking very good there. Yes, thank you, Hand. You're doing a great job. The EF mount will mount with the red to red and then you turn it. Uh, but as you can see, it's a little bit loosey-goosey there. That's the problem with photo lenses. Thankfully, the red has a little twisty knobby thing there to lock the lens in place so it doesn't move. Uh, but typically we you have with a DSLR lens is they're made for photos, not for video. And that little bit of movement doesn't really matter when you have photo. But when you're shooting video and you have things like a follow focus on there, that little bit of movement can actually mess up your image. So if you want to add a PL mount to a camera that's able to take a PL mount, here on the red, you have four different screws. Uh, you just take your little Allen key tool with your red and you're unscrewing the four screws. My preferred method is to do the camera facing like this to allow for at least amount of dust particles to get in there. You should be blowing it out anyways. But since you're just taking off the four screws, that is the EF mount coming off. There is the Red Dragon OLPF uh, and the sensor behind there. Want to make sure the sensors on the PL mount match up with the sensors on 
the camera. This is now a titanium PL mount from RED. Again, just four screws, you're screwing it back in. I go corner to corner to add normal pressure on both sides. As you can see, it's way bigger than a typical EF mount. Super simple to put on, four screws, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. So here is where the PL mount is a little different than the EF mount. There's one tab right in the top right corner. That's where your lens lines up with the four tabs on the lens. So if you're looking at this lens here, there's one, two, three, four tabs. Yeah, my finger pointing is really good. You wanna line up those tabs with that one tab in the corner. Like I mentioned, make sure your lens is on the right direction because it can go one of four ways. So just a little side angle of how this lock works on the PL mount. So the lens goes straight in, make sure you line up that tab with that top right little insert, slide the lens in all the way back and make sure you lock it in place. Always check to make sure your lens is in the right spot before you let go of it. When you start moving into the world of PL mounts, a whole new world of opportunity opens up for you because you start being able to use vintage lenses or lenses that have very specific characteristics to them in regards to how they look on different sensors and different cameras, how they are soft or sharp or where they or how the bokeh looks on them. It just changes the way you look at the world through your lens. Is a PL mount for everybody? No. Is it awesome? It sure is. Hope this was helpful. Once again, my name is Jeff Heath. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like, leave a comment and let us know what you thought about this video and any questions that you may have. We will see you later.